taking on this role, I looked at the history of this university. And I think it's remarkable that there was a group of leaders back in 1957 that said, we are going to establish the university that's going to be done a little bit differently. Even though we have a lot of natural resources, it's our human capital that's going to matter. And I can think of no better place in the world to help drive that and make that happen than our university system. This university is very much the center of innovation on all dimensions, not just technology, but also on the social side. We have a lot to offer the world. Congratulations to the graduates and to your parents and family for helping you get where you are. Thank you. Good morning. Isn't this a beautiful morning? Welcome to Convocation at the University of Waterloo. If I may ask you to remain standing, and I will invite Julian de Rocher to sing our national anthem. Thank you. Please join me. Stand on God. 
Thank you, Julie. And please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, guests, family members, but most importantly, graduates, welcome to Convocation. My name is Feridun Hamdelopper, and I have the honor of serving as President and Vice Chancellor of this fantastic university. Normally, our Chancellor will be here giving some opening remarks. Our Chancellor, Dominic Barton, has not been installed yet. That will take place tomorrow. He sends his best regards and congratulations to our graduating class. And in the meantime, I will fulfill his duties and responsibilities as chancellor and also mine as president. Before starting this exciting day, however, it is also very important for us to acknowledge and reflect for the past and present elders of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. As our students will well know, the University of Waterloo is situated on the Haldeman Track. Haldeman Track extends along the uh, Grand River and is the land that is promised to the Six Nations people. Today is the day for our graduates. I try to pronounce it as best as I can. You are not graduates yet. You are graduands, and you will become graduates as you cross that stage. So there is one little more formality left. But ladies and gentlemen, just allow me to talk about our graduates a little bit. I know that I had the pleasure of, with most of you, welcoming you to the University of Waterloo uh, four, five, hopefully not more than five, six years ago. Uh, and we had a chat, or maybe you just listened to me, and we talked about how exciting it was to be here, the wonderful things that were waiting for you to be accomplished. Here is the day. You're here. And I had told you that you had every right to be here. You were brilliant, you were smart, you had every, every qualifications that were needed to come and attend the University of Waterloo, but also told you that it will require hard work. They did work very hard. Here they are. I cannot be more proud of you that what you have, been, what you have done, you have gone through a lot of hardship and you never took it for granted that you were here. While we are very proud of where you are today, your accomplishments so far, it's even a lot more exciting what you will be doing from here on. But pause for a second. This is also very, very special times for our institution. Last year, we were very proud that we were just 60 years old. This is 61-year-old. This year, we are 61. And this year came with a bang graduates of the Faculty of Science and fa Faculty of Applied Health Sciences. This is the year that the University of Waterloo won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> and we hope that there will be many more. I'm counting on you. And if I may turn my attention to our guests, parents, family members, friends, brothers, sisters, partners. I thank you so much. They are here because you were with them all the way. I told you they were brilliant, they were smart, but they also they needed your shoulder. Sometimes your pocketbook as well, but they needed you here. So the reason why they're sitting there because you had something to do with it. So thank you so much being all the way with them and being here today joining us on this celebration. Just a couple of items of formality. We're going to try our best to finish this celebration in two hours. 
it will depend on all of us to do this in two hours. So if you could, there will be instructions as to how we're going to do this, but I will ask you to remain seated until the convocation um, uh, is adjourned and the procession has left the, uh, uh, the auditorium. I'm going to turn my attention for a few more minutes to the graduates again. I will come back and talk to you at the end. But I, I'm not sure how tired everybody is going to be at that moment. So let me tell you now, the world is counting on you. The world is counting on the graduates of the University of Waterloo. Because while you were here, you learned a lot of things. You were into great depths in your areas of studies. But you also, I am sure, that had a much better understanding of the world our challenges, opportunities, and responsibilities as practitioners, scientists, citizens, but most importantly, graduates of the University of Waterloo. I hope that you will keep that belonging to this institution with you all the way, and we will be watching you with a lot of pride. So thank you again for everybody for being here. I wish you a very pleasant and exciting convocation ceremony. We will have a number of speeches. I'm not the only person. We will, have, we will start with acknowledging a tremendous contributions of an individual with an honorary doctorate degree. That will be followed by presentations of degree, again, acknowledging contributions of a member of the university, and then degrees in bachelor's, master's, and doctorate. At the end, we will try to again finish this in hopefully under two hours. It can be done. With that, I have the pleasure of inviting Professor Raymond Legg to, from the Department of Chemical Engineering to the podium. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present Lynn Judge. From 1979 until retirement in 2015, Lynn served as a pillar for the graduate studies community at the university. As Director of Academic Services in Graduate Studies and Postdoctoral Affairs, formerly Graduate Studies Office, Lynn championed a multitude of projects to improve the graduate student experience. Examples include transforming the application process, to a fully electronic platform, simplifying the delivery of student awards, facilitating a web presence for marketing and recruitment, and having an online graduate studies academic calendar, initiatives ahead of many other Canadian universities. Lynn's accomplishments were recognized through external accolades during her career the Ontario University Registrar's Association Honorary Membership and Award of Achievement, and Innovation Award for Waterloo's online application project. Recently, Waterloo received the Canadian Association of Graduate Studies Award for Excellence and Innovation for enhancing the graduate student experience for its parental support program a program that Lynn was instrumental in launching early in her career. Since Lynn retired, she continues to be an ambassador through her work on the Retirees Association and as the Keystone Campaign Co-Chair. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, in recognition of her passion, dedication, and contributions to graduate studies at the University of Waterloo, I request that you bestow the title Honorary Member of the University upon Lynn Judge. I'm honored to confer upon you, Lynn Judge, the title of member of, universe, of the university, and I extend my sincere congratulations.
I now invite John Garcia, Professor of Practice, Associate Director, Graduate Professional Programs, School of Public Health and Health Systems to the podium. Good morning. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present Dr. David Butler Jones. Dr. David uh, Dr. Butler Jones earned his medical degree at the University of Toronto, later specialized in family medicine at Queen's University and Toronto, and completed a Master of Health Sciences and Residency in Community Health and Epidemiology in Toronto. Over his accomplished career, he served in increasingly high-profile public health leadership roles, earning international rec recognition. During the 1980s and 1990s, he was medical officer in Algoma District and Simcoe County, Ontario. From 1995 to 2002, Dr. Butler Jones was chief uh, medical uh, health officer and executive director of, of the Population Health and Primary Health Services branches for Saskatchewan. He collaborated with the World Health Organization and the Canadian International Development Agency and in health initiatives in Chile, Kosovo, Scotland, Dominican Republic, and Turkey. Many best recognize Dr. Butler Jones as the, as the inaugural Chief Public Health Officer of Canada and head of the Public Health Agency of Canada, a, criti a critical public health leadership role that led to much needed public health system uh, reforms during the period of 2004 to 2014. Today, he is Senior Medical Officer and Atlantic Region Public Health Specialist for First Nations and Inuit Health with Indigenous Services Canada. Dr. Butler Jones' vision, passionate commitments, and leadership in public health and to health equity in particular have shaped the public health system and significant influ significantly influenced public health practice in Canada and internationally. After more than 35 years, he continues to work tirelessly to promote public health and health equity in Canada and abroad, and he serves very much as a model of public health leadership to his field. For these reasons, he's received multiple honorary academic degrees and professional recognitions. Mr. Vice Chancellor, in recognition of the outstanding record of his national and international public health leadership and his exemplary service to the public, and the academic community, I request that you bestow the title Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa, upon uh, Dr. Butler Jones. I'm honored to confer upon you, David Butler Jones, the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa, and I extend my congratulations. Thank you. Great. I now invite Dr. Butler Jones to address convocation. Good morning. Vice Chancellor and President, faculty, graduands, honored guests, proud family and friends. I want to thank you for this special honor. And what a privilege it is to stand here among you and to have a few moments to offer a few reflections. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the special place that the University of Waterloo has in my heart. Not only did a daughter and son-in-law earn graduate degrees from Waterloo, but I also remember fondly the development of the public health graduate program. 
Must I have always thought that this would have been a great place to go to university, and I suspect you might agree with me. And here I actually get to be a graduate in a funny kind of way. A very special congratulations to all of the graduates. You have accomplished a great deal by getting to this point, and is the beginning of an exciting new chapter in your lives. Who knows where you will end up, what paths you will take. Your future is a continuing adventure and an opportunity. Many have supported and influenced you to get to this point, and you will benefit from those connections and learnings long into the future. As part of my contribution today, I would like to offer just a few thoughts on what has given meaning to my own career, what may ultimately prove useful to you. The world is changing, the climate is warming, and nature of work and relationships are continually evolving. There are, however, some core principles and attributes that have and will stand the test of time and prove invaluable to a successful career. I couldn't hope to cover them all in this time, but I'd like to highlight a particular few. I'll briefly touch on four topics, communication, integrity, leadership, and connection. I'll then conclude with how these contributed to the very different outcomes in a tale of two pandemics. Now, good effective communication is my first focus. In dialogue, we are able to draw on collective wisdom to validate ideas and to make success and understanding more likely. And to accomplish true dialogue requires listening, not just planning our next comment. Coupled with this is the importance of transparency, openness, and honesty. And communication is most effective when accompanied by respect. I do not believe we can positively influence who or what we do not respect. We don't have to like a person or want to go to dinner with them, but we need to respect his or her role and interests and to understand each individual's or group's needs as best we can. If we are to have any hope of influencing a change of view, we cannot argue them into submission. I'm not sure when, if ever, as a result of being harangued about a view we hold, we've said, where have you been all my life? I've changed my mind. No, either we get angry ourselves or we go to our happy place. Now, essential in whatever we do is to maintain integrity. Our integrity is the one thing that is truly ours. No one else can take that away. However, sometimes we give it away. And once we sacrifice our integrity, it is extremely difficult to get back. Too often, I have seen colleagues in the pursuit of a position or to avoid responsibility have made the choice to compromise their integrity. Once lost, it is almost impossible to regain. And while it may not seem much to lose in order to get their way in the short term, it eventually comes back to bite. And that person may never actually understand why they've lost trust, trusted friends, respect, or that they don't achieve as much as they'd hoped. Now, there are times when maintaining our integrity will not be easy, as it may risk a job or other advantage, but it is a decision that is ours alone to make. It does not, however, mean you cannot compromise or be willing to lose a few battles that are necessary to win the ultimate objective. It is to know yourself and the important values that you expect in yourself and others, and so act accordingly. Now, all of us will play various leadership roles, sometimes from front, at other times from behind, often when least expected, whether it's in an organization, a family, or a community. It's not the leader's responsibility, in my view, to know, but to find out. An important aspect of successful leadership is to surround ourselves with smart people who are willing to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. As gratifying as it may be to constantly have those around us tell us how wonderful we are, it rarely leads to smart decisions or personal growth. Now, Lincoln was a great model of the value of being willing to engage with different perspectives and ideas. He included in his cabinet and among his advisors people who saw the world differently than he did. Some were even his political rivals. But he sought advice from them and others, listened also to his opponents, and then made his own judgment. He also was known for taking responsibility for things that happened under his watch, even bad decisions with which he was not involved. Rather than throwing colleagues under the wagon, they didn't have buses then, he would take responsibility for the issue and ensure there was a plan to address the problem. This created a culture not of blame and avoidance of risk, 
but of success, and it also engendered tremendous loyalty among those who might otherwise have been opponents. Success, then, is a team sport. Samuel Johnson perhaps said it best, it's amazing what can be accomplished when no one must assume the credit. Do your best, and there will be lots of credit to go around. Now, when it comes to strategy or decision-making, it's important others understand not only the decision, but also the elements that go into that decision. Because I told you so turns out to not be a very durable explanation. If others understand, they can adapt themselves to changing situations, and it can also create a repertoire of experience to inform other situations when there's no one around to ask. Sir Arthur Curry in the Battle of Vimy Ridge did what was novel for the time, ensuring the plan was understood throughout the army so that when the battle did come, they could adapt in the field to whatever happened. And while Vimy has become a defining moment for Canada, we often forget the elements of success. We too often underestimate the capacity of others to understand and to adapt. A tale of two pandemics. 100 years ago, just as World War I was winding down, what was probably the worst pandemic in history was ramping up. One third of the world's population became ill and some 50 million died. In Canada, there were 50,000 deaths, mostly among young adults between 20 and 40. Young people, the age of many of you, were perfectly well one day and dead a few days later. Because so many young were affected, life expectancy in the United States fell between 1917 and just a year later, 1918 by 12 years, to just over 36 in men and 42 years in women. There are many reasons why it happened the way it did. Mass displacement and crowding because of the war, global transpa transportation networks that didn't exist the same way previously, soldiers returning to their homes from Europe, poor overall health, lack of understanding of disease transmission, and very few effective treatments or prevention measures. Then some 90 years later, the world experienced another H1 pandemic of influenza. And just like 1918-19, those most affected were 20, between 20 and 40 years of age. People think it was somehow milder. But it was not because the virus was less dangerous. It was that the world and our understanding and capacity to deal with the virus had changed. In fact, there are strains of the virus from cases in 2009 that we studied in the Level 4 Winnipeg lab that kill faster and nastier than the 1918 virus we have. And the Americans have other strains with similar virulence. And as just one example, a nephew-in-law of mine, an undergrad student in his early 20s, perfectly healthy, spent eight weeks in hospital, three of them in a coma that very autumn. And there were thousands just like him filling intensive care units around the world. It is not that the virus was milder, it is that we were more effective. It was a combination of vaccines that prevented the disease, antivirals that stopped the spread of the most dangerous strains, thus less severe strains were more common. Hand washing, coughing in our sleeves, avoiding others when ill, all reduced the spread. And for the sickest, sophisticated ventilators and antibiotics to treat the secondary pneumonias meant that we had hundreds of deaths rather than tens of thousands. None of this happened by accident. Years of planning and cooperation across jurisdictions, building plans and relationships so that key players knew and trusted each other when the crisis hit. And routine matters could be handled quickly so that focus could be on the many surprises that inevitably occur. Sharing Canada had a stockpile of antivirals and a guaranteed source of sufficient vaccine. All were essential tools to combat the virus. A key strategy was then to ensure colleagues in Canada and internationally, along with other deputy ministers and ministers, knew what I knew shortly after I did, to assure that everyone was working with the best evidence. Guidelines were developed for different sectors, situations, schools, etc. Best practices for clinical care of severe cases were shared across the country and with international partners. I and others speaking through the media, in my case it was hundreds of press conferences and interviews, and through advertising in the schools, taught how people can protect themselves and others. Integrity of the speakers based on years of experience with the media and other professions mattered. And it meant that you could tell the Canadians, 
in international airports because they were the ones coughing or sneezing in their sleeve rather than, and, uh, rather than their hands, always washing their hands and using sanitizers. The result of all this was that Canadians can be proud of the fact that for the first time in history, they stopped a pandemic. In fact, the pandemic in Canada ended before Christmas, with almost half the population immunized, dramatically reducing the number of ill or dying and assuring a healthy environment for the Winter Olympics in Vancouver. Meanwhile, in neighboring countries and around the world, the pandemic continued through the spring, filling again their hospitals, intensive care units, and following the following, they were full again in the following 2010-11 flu season. So many families were severely affected. Hundreds in Canada lost loved ones, most at a young age, and our thoughts remain with them. Fortunately, though, it was not what it could have been if not for the efforts of individuals and organizations across Canada. It was likely the largest mass mobilization of the country where everyone had a role to play, even if it was as simple as washing hands and being immunized to protect ourselves and those we come in contact with. Effective communication, integrity, leadership, and connection are keys to success in ev events of every day and in a crisis, they're indispensable. You will have many opportunities in life to contribute meaningfully in order to make a difference. You will learn and grow from reflecting on your and others' experience. You will create and live your own path. Your way will be the best for you because it is what you choose or how you respond to what, cho what is chosen for you. I'd like to close then with a quote from Dr. Seuss. Now, these are stories from the 50s when I grew up, which I read, read to our own children till they could read themselves, and I'm, I'm very fortunate to say that my, my wife and two of our daughters were able to come here today. So, we never do any of this alone. Today, you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. And you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. Congratulations again. May the education you have, the learnings you will require, take, take you wherever you want to go. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jim Rush, and I'm the Vice President Academic and Provost of the University of Waterloo. I'd like to first thank Dr. Butler-Jones for his inspiring address to convocation and welcome you to uh, the group of Waterloo's distinguished alumni. <laughs> Would the members of the graduating class please rise? Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I present to you those scholars who have fulfilled the statutory requirements laid down by the Senate of the University that they may be admitted to their various and several degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in the University, I hereby admit you to your various and several degrees with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, honored guests and participants, what a fantastic day to be gathered together for convocation. Convocation is perhaps the most rewarding occasion in the life of a university. It evokes our ancient rights and privileges. It recognizes significant accomplishments. And at the same time, it stirs up within us the promise of new beginnings. On behalf of the entire University of Waterloo administration team, I'd like to formally thank all of those who have made today possible. Convocation actually literally means the action of calling people together for a large formal assembly. So if you think about it that way, it's not actually possible to have convocation without all of you. So thank you for being here. To the graduates and to the parents, to the family and friends of our graduates, 
especially those of you who have traveled from far to be here today, thank you. To the university community for developing these scholars and delivering this outstanding event for our new alumni, thank you. And of course, we acknowledge all those who have been unable to join us today. We feel their presence as part of this special assembly. I would like to now ask all the graduates to remain seated as I invite all of the parents, their friends, event coordinators to rise as you are able. This is really just an opportunity for you to look around, to find your special person, to wave, to connect. We're going to hear from many of you during the proceedings. Everyone know where their special people are? Thank you very much. Graduates, let's together thank all of those who have made your convocation so special. Thank you. Please be seated. As we prepare to confer the degrees, I uh, have a few notes. For those guests wishing to take photos of their graduates, there's a photography area located to the left of the stage, right over here. And that can be accessed, accessed by exiting the back of the gym via the west exit doors. If you approach this area uh, just before your special graduate is about to proceed across the stage, you'll be able to take pictures. And once you've taken your photos, uh, we'd ask that you please return to your seats to allow others to fill your spot to take photos of their special graduates as they come along. Graduates, I know you learned this long before you came to the University of Waterloo. It was probably one of the first things you learned in school. It was the alphabet. And that means, as you'll have be well aware, that some of your names begin with an A. And some of your names begin with letters that are much further down the line in the alphabet. It's nobody's fault. You didn't, most of you didn't choose your names. We just ask that you would please show respect to all of your fellow classmates by returning to your seat after you've been hooded so that we can all share in this celebration, this convocation uh, together. Now we're going to proceed to the main event, the conferring of the degrees. To that end, I now invite Paul Stoley, Interim Dean of the Faculty of Applied Health Sciences, to announce graduates' names. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts Honors Program. Murad Alizada, Kendra Nicole Butler, Olena Stephanie Chimidge, Danielle Leanne DeBoer, Caitlin Elizabeth Douglas, Woo! Trudy Hagerman, Rebecca Elizabeth Hollinshead. Shannon E. Hughes, Elizabeth Mariasa Rose Kelly, Laura Leeming, Daphne Yatdor Lee, Rachel Darlene. Marriott <laughs> 
Owen Gillespie Adante Masterton, Asen Osmansoy, Julia Lynn Pavlik. Keegan Holly Sauer, Alexandra Sane Wittgenstein, Stephanie Schiabel, Caitlin Amanda Salvas, Alex Silver. Declan Sean Thomas Smeaton. <laughs> Cheyenne Top. Natalie Ann Visser. Thank you, Mr. Chan Vice Chancellor. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Public Health Honors Program. <laughs> Daniel Porhasain, Michael Stryker, Andrea Rachel Wong. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science General Program for a year. Alashaban Lalubai Patel. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science Honors Program. <laughs> Alexandra Allegre. Oluwashei Funmi Christiana Balogan. Manuit Kor Pular. Chris Boudou, Gabriel Cadiz, Mohini Chiramunj. Andy Duak, Metahan Ibrisin, Sebastian Patrick Jania. Thomas Adrian Mojesh, Adrian Allen Smith, Thivia Thirikus Warren.
Russell Zenming To, Sarah Sky Towers, Kishanthini Baratharaja. Natalie Yi Ling Young. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. I now invite Robert Lemieux, Dean, Faculty of Science, and Marley Spafford, Associate Dean of Science, Undergraduate Studies, to the podium. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science, General Science, three year. Bobby Alexander Antrobus, Amal Awad, Dwayne David Antonio Betty. Emily Damianoff, Shalina Ganeswaran, Jalen Hugh, Natharsam Jayakaran, Yeruj Mohammed Khalili. William Tran Le. Wei Jing Liang. Olivia Hendrika Marie Moore. Avidu Negalescu. Prasad Nithi, Brittany Nicole Rabak, Amanda Teresa Shahita, Jackie Shun Kit Su, Subanya Thuthanthira Karen. Punathan Thea Gallanen Gam Frank Junior Rilgage, Andrea Dawn Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. Morning, science grads. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science Honors Program. Junwoo An, Syed Ali, Roland Eric Orion Astra. Elise Jacqueline Walker Batista, Matthew Betke, Jim Brooks.
Nancy Chai, Gloria C. Lok Chan, Lokian Jensen Chan. Qutian Valerie Chen, Armit Singh Dinsa, Chao Wei Ding, Cassandra Dodu, Lori Dumas, Farzan Gasban. Sarah Graham, Amrit Graywall, Huming Guo, Norman Long Ha, Dylan Thomas Hagee, Rhiannon Michaela Hodgson. Alice Yushuang Wan, Esther Yejing Ji, Miriam Rene Jolica, <laughs> Siobhan Laura Lee Kalnins, Nathaniel Ko, Ellen Wen Le. Calvin Lee, Philip Michael Anthony Lemoine, Brianna Gabriel Lemonius, <laughs> Jesse Jason Lim, Ju Fan Liu, Jacqueline Lowe. Yuan Yi Fiona Lu, Mingji Luo, Karen Karyan Ma. <laughs> Gina Marcus, Anna Maria Masood. Jessica Ann Matthews. <laughs> Jordan David McConkey. <laughs> Evan Robert Blair Moores. Brandy Morovic. Anujint Naganathan, Delaney Nash, Wesley Takiril Olson, <laughs> 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 
Nicholas Ongaro, Elisa Kate Overton, Drasti Arsha Kumar Patel. Cecilia Pham, Viet Pham, Tatiana Portelli Graham. Varnisha Prabhakaran. Sierra Turner Batul Rizvi, Dominic Rogalski, <laughs> Devine Elise Rumble, Prabhjit Singh Sahota, Sanjika Siegel. Rutu Divyesh Kumar Shah, Zikwi Chan, Siwei Chen. <laughs> Naftaj Singh. Mohisan Skrikula Divan, Justin Ryu Su. Kishani Subramaniam, William Sudletsky, Anki Sun. Tarkin Sutton, Ming Yang Tao, Lorraine June Rosh Thomas. <laughs> Tiana Jeanne Thompson Allen, Tiffany Talia Tran. Alexandria Dominique Trigiani. <laughs> Chung Lung Seng, Charles Jr. Valero, Sanujan Vasavan. Krishni An Vatsalan, Sarika Vishnamurthy, Daliha Wahid, Vienna Wong. Kelly Young, Brenda Yu, <laughs> Yukui Zhang, 
Ji Zhuo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. I now invite David Edwards, Associate Dean Hallman Director, School of Pharmacy, to the podium. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree Doctor of Pharmacy. Ramaz Abdel Syed. Akriti Agarwal, Nesma Magdi Ahmad. Isra Ali, Srina Amin, Alexandra Andre. Daniel Archibald, Maria Aslam, Paulina Bajorek, Jennifer Danielle Boyvin. Malika Bozorgi Kia Sara Ye, Melissa Camuso, Evan Stewart Castledon, Clement Chan, Eunice Chan. Huyi Megan Chan, Yo Yo Lok Yu Chan, Bilal Chowdhury, Il Young Chong, Li Ho Chu. Emily Catherine Cowley. <laughs> Jennifer Curran. Jameson Dang. <laughs> Stephanie Nicole DeYoung. Angel Deng, Risha Yogesh Desai, Sonia Danjal, <laughs> Stephanie Ann Alexis DeSano. Samantha Christine Diaz, David Doe, Katie Dodds, Sashin Duggle, Chantel Marie Duncan.
Irene Ducom. Loran Alexandra Alero Dion. Esther A. Ling Fung. Taylor Don Gertzma. Carlene Gern. Amira Gurgis. Marianne Gurgis. Alamjir Halan. Thomas Michael Hanlon. Mahin Humayan. Vicky Huwin. Maha Imam. Ji Yo In, Nathan Sangbong Ng, Tanisha Jacob, Nicola Jovovic, Thomas Allen Keller. Asha Kuzal. Christina Curry. Yumi Kim. Artwar Kopak. Christina Domenica Kozlovsky, Kevin Ku, Eric Yipshing Kong, Joanna Dorothy Leek. Stephanie Lee, Corey Maurice Lefebvre, Victor Lee, Miki Lu, Aaron McFadden. Jean V. Malhotra, Erica Martire, Megan Elizabeth McGill, Cassandra McClellan, Hannah Claire Millington. Valeria Faina Mindich. <laughs> Sylvain Morin. 
Jing Mu. Yeah. Siddhartha Nandi. Saptha Navaratnam. Joseph Nyrider. Dan Nguyen. Ronnie Oddish. Jamie Marie Orlando, Amanda Owen, <laughs> Catherine Pacuta. Selena Passion, Dania Salah, Melanie Rochelle Sanderson, Elaine Kiwen Shen, Nadia Saba Siddiqui. Tarsika Sinathanbi, Joshua Raven Soares, Michelle Solzinski, <laughs> Megan Catherine Spence, Sarah Louise Stone. Kristen Laura Stippa. <laughs> Ree Sue. Ali Abid Syed. Robert Taglioni. Elaine Ying Tai, Jessica Tang, Samantha Giselle Terraborelli, Danielle Christine Thomas, Stephanie Tran. Serena Apple. <laughs> Nimit Parish Vias. Christine Waked. Jenny Wan. Colby Alexandra Weichel, Christine Catherine White, Tamara Lee Wilson. Jennifer Wong, Kelvin King To Yam, Noel Yu.
Maggie Chihua Yen, Charles Yu, Joyce Yu. Mehdi Sargar. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the additional candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science Honors Program. <laughs> Wasidun Muhammad, Chen Wei Zhang, Kijia Zhang. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. I now invite Rona Hanning, Associate Dean, Graduate Studies, Faculty of Applied Health Sciences, to the podium. Okay. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree Master of Arts. Uh, Jordan Taylor Bach. Domenico Caggianialio, Richard Timothy Eaton. Cassandra Robichaud. Jacqueline N. Stamnika, Nagat Tran, Catherine Marguerite Wedlofer, Samantha Weeb. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. I now invite John Garcia, Professor of Practice, Associate Director, Graduate Professional Program, School of Public Health and Health Systems, to the podium. Thanks, Rona. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree Master of Health Evaluation. Mickey Elizabeth Campbell, Iris Chan, Yukman Lok. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Mr. Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree Master of Public Health. Mad Madupe Adesina, Christine Nicole Cressman Bergen, <laughs> Samantha Burgess, <laughs> Leanne Catton, Myung. Gyun Cho, Charlene Angela Cajon. Jasminka Draka, 
Eleanor Avil, Natasha Fearing, Mark Fidali, Stephanie Lynn Gordon, Talea Harold. Cherry Hesami, Wahida Sharman Kazi, Arshnor Koja, <laughs> Laura Lewis Watts, Caitlin Morrison, Deepthi Nadu. Abiodun Otoyanji, Jenna Periscandalo, Nicole Victoria Pizerak, Shazmira Kadre, Angela Sinalate, Vedrana. Static Allison Stark Nagar Ilya Tutun Chian Megan Van Horen Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Now, I now invite uh, Rona Hanning, Associate uh, Dean of Graduate Studies, Faculty of Applied Health Sciences, back to the podium. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the candidates for the degree Master of Science. Nana Havn Amand, Jonathan Robert Altenbeck, Emma Marie Bartel. <laughs> Nolan Boys, Eric Kofi Breffel Mensa, Laura Alida Brooks. Alexandra Maria de Roche, Katrina Janet Fimiani, Dylan Franklin. Wajiha <laughs> Ghazi. Payman Golami, Putarak J. Axon. Mariko Hirano. Also a university finalist for the Alumni Gold Medal. Milos Jovkovic, 
Megan Natasha Kelleher, Uma Lad. Zisin Ma, Felicia Menocchio, Madison Haley Martin. <laughs> Taylor Magukin, Paige Alexandra Nosau. Nicholas Anthony Pelizzari. Miriam Price. Jared Michael Psutka. Victor Pai. Eric Quatch, Daniel Anthony Rickert, Priyanka Roy, Priyanka Roy. <laughs> Michelle Simeone, Ramy Nicholas Tanis, Tirapat. Tansu Wanaant. Nicole Vandenhugen, Paul James Wolf, Daphne Chen Ni Wu. Danny Wong, Kian Zhang. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. I now invite Andrea Daly, Director, School of Social Work, Renison University College, to the podium. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I present the candidates for the jury, Master of Social Work. Christine Almeida, Alba Soldad Ortega Rodriguez, Mary Bishop. Sandra Bozik Tositu. Tammy Butler. Grace Elizabeth Chanika. Karen Maud Coca, Emily Ann Dakers, Lori Ann DeFlute, Julie Diane Evans 
Fizel, Jacqueline Foster, Tracy Fowler. Tiffany Hartling, Marcia Ledit, Cynthia Maxwell. <clears throat> Jennifer McDonald, Eva Moloaka, Martha Ogeji. And Joku. <laughs> Mackenzie Ann Pratt, Rebecca Rainsford, Barbara Schust Lawrence. Sarah Switzer, Julie, Julia Spitka, Elisa Tomasi. <laughs> Melissa Tibbet, Irina Tichkina. Milena Urbanic. Amanda Venzen. Amanda Bresk. Michelle Lucille Williams. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. I now invite Sean Wedick, Associate Dean, Graduate Studies, Faculty of Science, to the podium. We will now confer the degree Doctor of Philosophy, the highest academic degree awarded by universities. Attaining a PhD is no easy task. It involves years of hard work, attainment of subject matter expertise, and a contribution to the sum of human knowledge in a subject area through original research. It is my privilege to call upon the following graduates to receive the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Natasha Bellin Altamirana, Altamirano, <laughs> Physics. Anthony Edward Bauer, Biology. Ryan Matthew Bradley, Kinesiology.
Ding Wen Chen. Adam Jeffrey Cole, Public Health and Health Systems. Justine Lauren Giosa, Public Health and Health Systems. Christina May Gruevsky, Kinesiology. Amy Kirsten Gunther, Physics and Quantum Information. Robbie Henniger. Physics. Zinda Liu, Biology. Kathleen McLean, Kinesiology. Michael David Mainland, Recreation and Leisure Studies. Megan Muldoon, Recreation and Leisure Studies.
Josephine Nabugumu, Public Health and Health Systems. Sarah Jacqueline Pointer, Biology. Amareza Rafai, Pharmacy. Dusan Saranac, Physics, Quantum Information. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I now request you to confer in absentia the various and several degrees upon those candidates who were approved by Senate but who were unable to be present at today's convocation. I confer these deg degrees in absentia. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chancellor. I now invite Gary Inanen, alumnus, to the podium. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, members of Convocation, ladies and gentlemen, well, as we've seen it, a Convocation is a spirited and an exciting time as we celebrate the incredible accomplishments of our graduates. During Fall Convocation, we recognize the recipients of a prestigious Alumni Gold Medal that is awarded to our most distinguished graduate students. The Alumni Gold Medal signifies an incredible accomplishment that we recognize each recipient for in the, in the presence of their peers who have shared their journey from celebrated student to esteemed alumnus. Graduates, while your status today here changes from student to alumnus, your relationship with the University of Waterloo should only grow. 
as this remarkable institution works to support and celebrate your personal and professional successes. As a proud Waterloo alumnus, I speak from personal experience when I tell you that this chapter in your life provides you with an exciting opportunity to engage with the university and its global network of alumni in a new way. Staying connected and building connections will provide you with meaningful and beneficial results. So on behalf of my fellow Waterloo alumni, welcome to the exclusive Waterloo Alumni Club. Mr. Vice Chancellor, as a graduate of the university's Faculty of Science with a Doctor of Philosophy in Physics, I am most honored to present to you the 2018 recipient of the Alumni Gold Medal for Outstanding Academic Performance in a Graduate Program, Robbie Henninger. I now invite Faridin Hamdalapur, President and Vice Chancellor, to the podium. I am back, and I'd like to keep my promise. My promise was that this was going to be under two hours, and I hope that we could do that. So I had a 45-minute long speech, uh, so I tried to, I'll try to cut it down to 40 minutes, okay? Um, guests, ladies and gentlemen, parents, supporters of our students, you may be wondering at our institutions, but especially at our university, everybody from our professors to our staff members, from our research labs to classrooms to administrative offices, where do we get our motivation? What inspires us to do what we do every day in and out? It's right there. We don't need to look too far to figure out where we get our inspiration. You may be also wondering, as they cross the stage with tremendous pride of accomplishment, we stopped them and asked them a few questions. Some of them, they were just over the moon, so excited. Some of them nervous. There's a lot of very sweaty hands, and you know, it's just <laughs> fabulous. But as I asked each and every one of them what they will be doing, this is where we get our inspiration. They will be doing some fabulous things. Some of them will go and work for some fantastic companies with a determination of making a big difference there. Some of them are going to some fabulous graduate schools. Some of them say, well, I am going to start my own business and I'm going to do my own work on my own startup. Regardless of what they do, <clears throat> they are determined to make a difference. And that is what we need. That is what the world needs. That's why we are so excited that in the first place, you came to study at the University of Waterloo. But as you heard from Gary and uh, from uh, Dr. Butler-Jones, that you're joining a family of more than 200,000 University of Waterloo alumni. Make good use of this network. This is your second family. That makes sure whatever you do, wherever you go, they're all there. And they're anxious to connect with you. They're anxious to welcome you to the University of Waterloo family. You have so many fantastic skills. You're brilliant, you're smart, you're determined, you're courageous, all of those things. And our nation, our country stands really tall in the world. We are known as hardworking, smart, determined, resilient. But again, as Dr. Butler-Jones said, we have integrity. We do things with integrity, and this is what I am sure that you will be doing all of these with tremendous integrity. As I mentioned earlier, 
Not that we will be watching you through any surveillance operation. We will be watching you through your accomplishments. Whatever you do, we know that you'll be adding new knowledge. You'll be adding, you'll make, you'll make life, the world, a better place for everybody. Some of you will create hundreds of new jobs. Some of you will come up with some fantastic new ideas that we can't even think of those now. Some of our PhD graduates, remember, the Nobel Prize was won on a PhD thesis, so think of that too. And some of you will be tremendously successful in many ways. Even you'll become very, very wealthy. So come back. We will benefit from your knowledge, we'll benefit from your experience, we'll benefit from your connections, and hopefully we'll benefit from your generosity as donors. <laughs> it's a fabulous day for our institution. At this convocation ceremony, this today and tomorrow, we'll be, we'll be graduating close to 2,400 new graduates. By the way, you're graduates now, no longer graduates. Okay. Absolutely. With that, I thank you again for being here. Our students, I thank you so much. You could have gone to any university you wanted. You came here. I hope that you will always remain with us in your heart, in your minds. Enjoy the rest of the celebration. The convocation is adjourned. Thank you.